Hello, First Communicants. I'm Father Mark here at St. Bernard Parish. You are members of St. Bernard through our school or our parish. And uh, I am really happy that you are preparing for your First Holy Communion. You know, I remember my First Holy Communion as a little boy at St. Patrick's. I had studied, I had learned, and I came to believe that the bread and wine becomes Jesus in his body and blood. He's alive. And it's always been God's hope, desire, and wish to come inside of us, to be with us, not only in baptism, the Holy Spirit, but every Sunday at every Mass, God comes within us to forgive sins, to make us strong. I want to show you today at the altar what happens at that part of the Mass. After we've listened to Scripture, we've heard God speak to us, what happens at the altar? You see it from the pew. Now I want you to see it a little closer. The miracle, the miracle of the Mass. When a priest comes to the altar, there's a number of things you see here. One is this book called the Roman Missal. It's a book, ancient book, old book, full of many prayers that has been passed down to us for centuries of how to call down the Holy Spirit, the priest, who can trace himself back to an apostle through the laying on of hands upon him, through his bishop, all the way back. The priest to change the bread and wine through the Holy Spirit into the body and blood of Jesus, as Jesus commanded us to do, right? Do this in memory of me. So the altar, we sometimes call it a table because it brings us to the Last Supper, but it's also the altar where we offer a sacrifice. We make the death of Jesus on the cross actually come here. We're there. Did you know that? That's why we kneel at Mass. How do we set it up? You see, I have my chalice here from when I became a priest. Do you know the first person to celebrate Mass using this is a saint in heaven, St. John Paul II. Super cool. This one was a gift from my mom and my family. It's made of gold because it holds the precious body and blood of Jesus. Nothing less. The first thing we do is we take out this. This is called a corporal. And we open it up. It's a sacred cloth. We open it up. And I place it right on the altar with the prayer saying that everything I put on this corporal, I want to become the body and blood of Jesus. So I'm talking to the Father in heaven. Sometimes you see me look up. It looks like I'm looking at the ceiling. I'm not. I'm talking to the Father, preparing to lift up Jesus to him. And with Jesus, all of us. So I lay out the pall. And I have on top here, I have a sort of a hard square. This is called a pall. At one point, I'm going to put this over the chalice. Mine has a beautiful image of Mary on it with the cross in the background. When I come here, before I place the bread and wine on the altar, I use an old prayer from the Passover, similar to what Jesus would have prayed. First, I take the bread and I say, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we've received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. And you say, blessed be God forever. And I place the gold paten, that's what this is called, the beautiful gold plate, a paten, on the altar. In the center of the altar is the bread. It's a flat piece of bread called unleavened bread, like Jesus used at the Last Supper. We use unleavened bread like Jesus used. We call this the host. Right now, it's just bread. But when I say the special words, this is my body, called the words of consecration to make it holy, it changes. After I place the bread on the altar, and I take the chalice, there's a white cloth inside of it. We call it a purificator because it purifies clean the chalice when it becomes, when the wine changes to the precious blood. I pick up the chalice. This one's beautiful. 
It has the words on it in Latin, for this is the chalice of my blood. When you come to Mass, you can take a close look at this. The priest has to fill it with wine, like Jesus used at the Last Supper. He takes this beautiful crystal container called a cruet, and he pours just enough wine into the chalice, puts the top back on. He takes regular water, not holy water, takes the top off, and he pours a little bit of the water into the wine, and he says this, through this mingling of water and wine, may we come to share the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share our humanity. What does that mean? That just as Jesus, who is God in heaven, God the Son, came into our world as the baby Jesus and became human, in Jesus, God becomes human. He becomes one. So like this water and wine becomes one, Jesus becomes, in him, is fully God and fully man. Through this mingling of water and mind, may we come to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share our humanity. It's the prayer that one day we become one with God, like God became one with us. He takes the wine and he says the words, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. And he places the chalice on the altar, and over it, he places the pall. He's going to lift that off when he calls down the Holy Spirit. So now the priest has put the patent with the bread, the chalice with the wine mixed with water onto the corporal, saying, God, everything on here, change into your body and blood. Before he moves then into speaking the special words that changes the bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus, he washes his hands so all the people can see symbolically that he's a sinner too. He needs to be washed clean. And he prays this prayer. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. And you'll see the deacon pour the water over the priest's hands and then he carries it away. Sometimes an altar server will do that. The prayer then moves to the altar. And the part we pay attention to are the special words. When, Jesus, when the priest calls down the Holy Spirit, and the priest says the words of Jesus to change. He says this. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. He lifts off the pall. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. This imagery of my hands like this kind of looks like the Holy Spirit, the dove. We're calling down the Holy Spirit from heaven upon the bread and wine to prepare these gifts of bread and wine from the people to become the body and blood of Jesus. The fancy word we use for this is the epiclesis. You'll hear a server ring the bell once so that we remember that the Holy Spirit is coming down. Then the priest prays the words that Jesus commands him to. He says this, At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. And the priest lifts up Jesus for all the people to see. And then he lays it back down carefully on the paten, and he genuflects. He goes down on one knee because it's no longer bread but Jesus. The moment the priest speaks those words, this is my body, it changes forever, and it never changes back. That's why we keep the host that has been changed in the tabernacle. So the priest genuflects. 
You saw me bend my head like this. That's because you no longer see my face. It's Jesus who says those words for his people. This is my body given up for you. He then takes the chalice filled with wine and he prays the prayers. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Then he lifts the chalice up to the Father and places it on the altar. And when he says those words, this is the chalice of my blood, the wine changes forever into Jesus. And then he says the mystery of faith. And the mystery means something we'll never fully understand. The gift of God's death and resurrection in Jesus. The mystery of faith that we often say is when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And the priest will continue then to, to pray, calling on the angels and the saints. And the high point is then at the very end of all those prayers, he lifts up the body and blood of Jesus and holds it high and he prays this prayer. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. That everything is through Jesus and with Jesus. You say the amen. Amen means I believe. That's a big statement, oh, but it's a beautiful statement of love towards God. We then move into the Lamb of God. Jesus is the Lamb of God offered for us. And the priest will take the body of Jesus and he breaks it saying, Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And the priest will drop a portion of the body of Christ into the chalice. And he says, may this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life, heaven, to all who receives it. He then holds up the body and blood of Jesus for the people to see. And he says this, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. And then you say with everyone, like the old Roman soldier, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. The priest receives and drinks, and then you do. This is your roof, your head. God comes inside of you. We're not worthy to receive the body and blood of Jesus. But because he says we are, he heals our hearts to receive Holy Communion. At a later video, we'll teach you how to receive Holy Communion. But that's the miracle of the Mass. This is my body. The bread changes. This is the chalice of my blood. The wine changes. It never changes back. When I hold up the body of Jesus, when I hold up the blood of Jesus, you hear three rings of the bell, like the angels in heaven who cry out, holy, 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 to remind you and me that it's him. Wherever you go in the world, whatever language the mass is set in, it's always the same, the same miracle for you and for me, God desiring to heal and enter his people to forgive sins. And one day, Bring you and me and everybody we love into everlasting life in heaven. God bless you.